Okay, it's been um, a few day or a few weeks off, or about two weeks off, something like that. Um, I've actually been working on the next brain junk food, the first video one. I already nixed two of the games. One of them I probably won't be able to do because I just can't play the game without getting frustrated. But um, the one I'm doing, it's going to be slightly different than the rest of the brain junk foods. But I'm planning on it being a lot of fun to watch and a lot of gameplay more than anything. In fact, I pretty much have it bookended where it's the beginning and the end is me talking, but everything else in between is just gameplay. But we'll talk about that more in depth later. Um, have two games to review this weekend. One of them's an older game, but I want to talk about the good one first, um, at least if you're playing single player, and that's Sleeping Dogs. Now, I've been watching a lot of reviews where people have been saying, oh, the, um, the story's predictable, the gameplay is just everything else you'd see in a... Fix this chair. Free-roaming action game. And I've always had a problem with people seeing the latter. Mainly because it's kind of one of those situations of, if it's not broke, why are you going to fix it? If it works, it works. In Sleeping Dogs, while it doesn't gameplay-wise do anything extremely innovative, they do fix a lot of the broken mechanics that are in a lot of these free-roaming games. I mean, let's face it, as much as people like GTA 4, the hand-to-hand -hand combat in it was balls-out pathetic. The Sleeping Dogs, the hand-to-hand -hand combat in it I'm trained in advanced combat, and I'm watching this going, yeah, this is stuff I'd do if I was in a fight. Y you break bones. You break somebody's arm to so they can't use it, which they still do, so I don't know why it doesn't have a good effect. But I think my favorite is staggering somebody by grappling them, punching them in the stomach, then going behind them and stepping on their kneecap to break their leg. That is something I would do if I was ever caught in a situation where I needed to defend myself against someone twice my size. But, um, that's something anyone who is trained in combat would do. It's a good way to disable people. But the way they execute it in this game is absolutely brutal and fluid. They, they essentially use the same control scheme for Arkham City, Arkham Asylum, how they did the free flow combat and that, but instead of having the cape fake, you have a grapple move where you can grab certain enemies and run them into walls, do environmental attacks, which I'll get to here in a second, or throw. And it really pays off. The combat in the entire game really pays off, not just from that, but just how visceral it is. Um, another good example is, like I said, the environmental attacks. It starts off, oh, you're shoving guys' heads in vents, or shoving their heads in speakers, throwing them out of windows. But I think the one that first got me was um, the air conditioner, towards the beginning of the game. You take somebody's head and shove, their, and shove it at the top of an air conditioner, and their face is skinned off. It chops it, their face completely off. Um, the swordfish, I think... You can see where that's going with the swordfish. But I think my favorite, most gruesome one is in a chop shop. or It's like a harbor chop shop type of area. But you have this crane holding the engine. You run this guy into the car's hood, which is open. Bend him over and then kick the crane so the engine falls right on top of him. Now I'm watching that going... Ugh. I want to do that again. But, um, it, it's not gory, but it leaves a lot to your imagination where it's kind of like, I don't even want to see this in real life. And it, it works. It really fits the feel of the game. It really fits the feel of this Hong Kong action movie type of game. But th this is where it gets weird for me to review this. Because, um... The writing doesn't do that. 
The writing ranges from the stereotypical Hong Kong movie plot, which does kind of make it predictable, to really lighthearted missions, lighthearted scenes, or just emotional. I don't want to give any spoilers out because this is definitely a game I'm going to suggest, maybe not for $60, but once it does drop in price. But, um, the big reason it's a really big clash is because if you've seen John Woo movies or, um, pretty much any Asian exploitation film made in the 70s, you've played this game. Except for a few throwaway missions like taking a bride to get her wedding cake and her wedding dress and stealing the flower. Okay, stealing the flowers from the monk was fun, but... Still, it doesn't fit with the feel of the game. It feels too comical for a game that is co almost completely serious. You also have missions, while they're necessary for kind of character development, don't feel right for the game. Um, one mission has you getting the shooter and bringing the shooter to the victim's mother so she can torture him. Then you have to find the shooter's boss and do the same thing. And instead of playing like an exploitation film, it plays like a Saul movie. You, you really don't see what happens to the guy, or both of them, but you kind of see the aftermath of one of them and you know what's going to happen to the other. And it's kind of like this, it, it doesn't fit with the feel of the game. But it's interesting for character development which there really isn't enough of. I The only thing, character I could tell you about is the main character, Wei Shen, and I don't want to spoil anything, because all you're going to get for character development is logs where you read about why he's a good or bad cop for an undercover investigation, why he's there, his motivations. Every other character, I can't tell you anything about them other than their name. Um... That and James Wong plays the head of the triad, and James Wong is always, or James Hong, I'm sorry. James Hong is always awesome. I mean, this is one of the most pivotal Asian actors next to George Takei and Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. He, he, watch Big Trouble in Little China, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Or Briscoe County Jr. The guy's a phenomenal actor, and he's a phenomenal actor in this, too. Um,. Actually, most of the acting in this game is pretty damn good. I think the only character that doesn't live up to his acting expectations is Wei, and that's because he just comes off as reading the script. Um, people who read the Thor review I did, not the movie, the, the game, I can demonstrate how bad the acting in Thor was. Loki's trying to be menacing after... Odin goes into the Odin sleep because I will do what's best for Asgard and for Loki. He sounds like he's sitting in a chair going, Why am I doing this? What's my motivation? And that's how Way comes off. It's like, I think one of my favorite comical lines in it is him talking to his handler who's saying, You're losing control. He goes, I'm a, you're a cop. I'm an undercover cop. And I'm like, Wow, it just sounds like you dubbed cop over cop, so it sounds exactly the same every time he says cop. It doesn't sound like two sentences. It sounds like, I'm a cop, comma, you're an, or, bleh, you're a cop, comma, I'm an undercover cop, comma. And it jars it. I mean, it, it's like me walking up to any other internet reviewer going, you're a professional reviewer, I'm a non-professional reviewer. And it, it doesn't flow. But all the other acting I've seen in the game really works. Um, none of them take the script too seriously, though. And I think that's what adds to it, oddly enough. Because if you're trying to read, or play through this game and take it completely seriously, you're not going to like it. And I kind of knew, one, when it was taken away from the true crime series, 
it's not going to be true crime. And two, when Square Enix got it, I knew it wasn't going to be this whole revolution in gaming. I knew it was going to be something that would be either fun or terrible. What I wasn't expecting was for them to get so much right about the gameplay, but so little right about the writing. And um, I haven't been talking about the gameplay as much. And that's because there's really nothing to talk about. Um, I've already talked about the fighting. The driving mechanics can be infuriating if you're trying to get a perfect cop score. And I'll tell you right now, that's not the way to play this game. You're Getting a perfect cop score, you'll get chances to do it in the four cases. And I've completed three of the cases. My cop score is level six, my triad's level five. And that's getting a low cop score in just about every mission. So don't really worry about your cop score in the missions. And the level up system could use some work. Um, the collectibles actually pay off for you. You have health shrines, statues where you can learn special moves. It, it works. And the driving, if you played any of the Need for Speed series, say for, um, what's that one? Undercover. Then you know what you're doing. Where it really lacks is the writing where you, it tries to take itself too seriously sometimes and then others it doesn't. And the graphics department. And normally I don't rant on the graphics this much. And the reason I am here is because it's painful at points. The city is beautiful. Hong Kong in this is absolutely amazing to look at. But some of the minor characters, you can tell they put Lucy Liu's face on a lot of the women and then just stretched out the cheekbones. You can see all the polys on the face. Um, a lot of the models don't have profiles at all. Like you know how you know the nose sticks out and everything. A lot of the models is just flat, and a lot of them look very rudimentary. And the reason I don't normally harp on that on uh, free roaming games is because you have this entire city, you have an entire population to worry about. But when Saints Row has people that look human compared to this, and Saints Row the Third was kind of meant to be comical, then um, you're not doing something right. Graphically, it is very, very subpar on the people department, and everything else looks fantastic. I mean, even the vehicles look fantastic. But... That's not game-breaking. It's a little frustrating from my point of view, but it's not game-breaking. It's not as game-breaking as the writing being kind of wonky at po points. Um, I'm trying to think, what else? There's something else about this game. Oh, another thing that gets me, and this may affect the score a little, is the dating mechanic. A lot of people know in Grand Theft Auto 4, you can have girlfriends, take them out on dates every so often. This one, you have several women you can date, but you only take them out once, and then you get what you're going to get from dating them. Not necessarily, oh, you sleep with them, but like, one person gives you a lockbox finder, another one gives you a statue finder, and it's kind of like, okay, great, now I can find the stuff on the map. That takes away half the fun of look for it. If it was late in the game where you get it, or at the end of the game, it would have been fine. But I found half the collectibles halfway through the game. Thanks to this. And it just... I don't know. It really irked me that you can only take these women out once, especially since one of them was of damn good character. And that one's just kind of heartbreaking because you take advantage of her pretty much, and she screws you over. But, um, that aside, I'd have to give Sleeping Dogs an 8 out of 10, like a B. Because it is a fun game. It may not be worth $60, but, um, it's a damn good game. It's a lot of fun. I'd wait till it drops down to about $40, maybe $30 to get, though. But definitely, 
definitely play it. I'm going to take a bit of a break, and then I'm going to review the next game. Be back in a bit.